<laughs> Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to today's celebration of the recipients of Itawamba Community College's most prestigious honor to be presented to the members of our college family, the faculty and staff awards of distinction. In addition, Itawamba Community College is recognizing another group of individuals who have devoted a significant number, number of years of service. We honor them on their retirement and wish them the best as they leave the college. During the first portion of the program, seven outstanding faculty, staff, and administrators will be honored for their extraordinary contributions to Itawamba Community College. On behalf of your college family, congratulations to each of you. Today's presentation of the college's sorry, meritorious awards is a celebration of honors in three categories, support staff, administrative professional staff, and faculty members. All full-time employees serving a minimum of three years at Itawamba Community College are eligible to win the award. Among the criteria for selection include outstanding job performance, teaching, coaching, guidance, and service, unselfish dedication to the students and the college, and outstanding leadership, community involvement, and or professional organizations. All currently enrolled students and ICC employees were invited to nominate exemplary individuals whom they consider to be worthy of this award. Tyler Camp, Chief of Staff and Special Assistant to the President, will now present the recipients for the first award, which is for Administrative Professional Staff of the Year. Good afternoon. Let's try one more time. Good afternoon. All right. I'm excited to announce these first two honorees. Um, they're very deserving, that is for sure. Our first honoree is Clinton J. Adams. He's going to hate me for saying that. He is a marketing specialist, but we all know him better as CJ. His official responsibilities include photography, award-winning photographer, I must add, graphic designer, yearbook, and marketing, but he does so much more for us here at Illawarra Community College. This year, the M. Taylor Tudor revived the fashion trial after several years, and to say that it was, a, it was successful is an understatement. One of his nominators said that CJ's knowledge of ICC is unparalleled. He is a walking encyclopedia of knowledge about ICC because he has been around Fulton his entire life. CJ is an awesome employee and a huge asset to the college. Among his attributes of quick responses or quick responses to all requests, he's very patient and typically has a positive outlook. <laughs> CJ spends countless hours, both day and a lot of nights, covering ICC activities, and sometimes we take his talents and skills for granted because he comes to work and just simply gets the job done. He and his wife Kristen volunteer regularly to lead a Bible study group at church. He is an awesome father to Emmy and Kay. I know they're here. A second nominator said that uh, he enjoys a challenge to make the college even better than it already is. If there is anyone deserving of this prestigious award, it is simply C.J. Adams. Congratulations, C.J. Adams. Our second honoree for the afternoon is Mr. Jim Ingram, Director of the Itawamba Community College Foundation. His nominator says, Jim Ingram is an outstanding example of the ICC spirit. His selfless dedication to support the college in any way that he can is simply unmatched. In his work role, he goes out of his way to help ICC students who receive foundation scholarships each year. He also works diligently to bring in new financial support for the college, such as partnerships with the Carpenter Foundation, which has netted more than $200,000. He's somewhat of a celebrity in the broadcast arena as well. He volunteers with ICC Sports Information Team to assist in the broadcast booth, which is an opportunity to publicize our outstanding student athletes, as well as ICC's foundation opportunities on game broadcast. His external but related involvement 
includes the Inner Alumni Council, the Community Development Foundation, the Jim Ingram Community Leadership Institute, Tupelo Parks and Recreational Council, and Tupelo First Presbyterian Church. Jim Ingram, congratulations upon your selection as an Administrative Professional Staff Member of the Year. Barry Emerson, Vice President of Career and Workforce Education, will now present the first support staff member of the year award. Our first honoree is Ms. Carrie Lindsay. The new job title is Administrative Assistant to the Office of Career and Workforce Education, but more appropriately, as one nominator said, she is the heart and soul of career education. She helps instructors on a daily basis. She's always there to help with whatever I need. And she does so much, especially for programs with only a single instructor. The support she provides goes way above and beyond her job description. She's helped me with registration issues, problems, drops, scheduling issues, reports, forms, ensuring proper formatting, program brochures, room schedules, etc. Even if she is extremely busy, she always makes me feel better and helps me with whatever problem I have. Carrie's second nominator, who has worked with her for several years, called her a hard-working individual, conscientious and diligent in her work ethic, and is a delight to be around. Carrie, we at ICC appreciate not only all that you do for career education, but for your caring attitude to ensure that ICC students succeed. Congratulations. Carrie Lindsay, support staff member of the year. <clears throat> Mr. Tim Center will present the next award. The second is Mr. Freddie Tucker. Mr. Freddie was a carpenter for us on our Tupelo campus, and to, divide, to define Freddie Tucker by his job description would be impossible, to say the least. It's more that Freddie is always willing to help where needed. Perhaps one of his nominators said it best, Freddie Tucker's love for ICC is immeasurable. He has been a wonderful example to his work-study students, passing on to them his knowledge, and showing them what integrity work ethic, responsibility, and dependability look like. They genuinely love him and seek his guidance often. Not only is he valued as an ICC employee, but he doesn't know how much he has meant over the years to people he doesn't know, and I'll explain that. Freddie, one of his nominators said, is like ICC's own Santa Claus. <laughs> Each Christmas he brings that special spirit to the college by designing, building, and driving the ICC Christmas float in all area parades. From Houston to Tupelo to Angry to Pontotoc to Fulton and all points in between, Freddie has logged many miles, but he considers it a labor of love. And he also brings a lot of joy to the lives of the many people that see it. I feel Freddie Tucker is the embodiment of ICC standards and is more than worthy of this award, the nominator closed. Freddie Tucker, congratulations upon your selection of Support Staff Member of the Year. Next up, Dr. Soberl, Vice President of Structural Services, will present the next one. Our first honoree is Ms. Emily Logan Jones, Forestry Technology Instructor. Her nominator said she is more than just a teacher. When it comes to forestry at ICC, she's both a life and career coach for forestry students. 
to not only teachers, the curriculum, but she ensures that her students have an opportunity to gain the knowledge and learn the tools that are needed to succeed in the field of choice and in practical hands-on matters. She doesn't make it easy, but she makes the course work attainable and delivers it in such a way that makes her students eager to learn. She is passionate about what she teaches and about her students learning the material. She not only does she teach, but she also assists her students with job placement, a significant step in their life journey. She's a mentor, she's an inspiration, and she's been there to help students financially when they need it. Congratulations, Ms. Emily Logan Jones, faculty member of the year. is Ms. Robin Lowe, English instructor who is nominated by multiple individuals. As a 16-year Phi Theta Kappa advisor, faculty scholar, and Mississippi, Louisiana advisory board member, Robin continues to work tirelessly to grow the Upsilon Sigma chapter. While, while shuffling her many other duties, she makes sure that ICC's PTK members have the resources they need to be successful. At the onset of COVID-19, she worked diligently and devoted countless hours to ensure the strength and success of the chapter and its five-star status. She oversees homework submissions, manages its budgets, remains in constant contact with the PTK members, and encourages the entire officer team to excel all of them do. Bright students from across Northeast Mississippi come to ICC just because of the tremendous success of PTK. Because of her, ICC students receive amazing, once-in-a-lifetime educational opportunities for awards and scholarships. In short, she is the epitome of what it means to be a Southern leader. Congratulations, Robin Lowe, Faculty Member of the Year, your students and ICC appreciate you. The final award in this category is the Excellence in Education Outstanding Faculty Member Award and has been very generously endowed by John and Beth Lincoln. Criteria for selection include full-time faculty, outstanding teaching, coaching and guidance, and unselfish dedication to students and the college. And additional criteria include contributions to the college, the committees, special projects and volunteerism, service to the community, as a representative of the college and art exhibitions, concerts, and public performances. The 2022 recipient of the significant honor is Mr. Bradley Howard, instructor and division chair for computer science. Bradley's nominator says he has served the college well by being a student advisor, participant on multiple committees, a sponsor of both the Upsilon Sigma chapter of Phi Theta Kappa and the Computer Science Club. Most recently, he has been instrumental in ICC's receiving $20,000 in a Mentors Link Advancing Technology Education Grant awarded by the American Association of Community Colleges with funding from the National Science Foundation. ICC's grant will be used for establishing an Introduction to STEM Professions course, a STEM club, and a STEM week, which was celebrated this past February. As sponsor of the Computer Club, Bradley worked with his students to collect and refurbish computers to give students who needed them during the forced remote learning during COVID-19. His nominator said his dedication, leadership, and diligent work make him a great candidate for this meritorious award. Congratulations, Mr. Bradley Howard, the recipient of the John Beth Lincoln Endowed Congratulations to you all um, upon your selection by your peers and recipients of the college's most prestigious awards for 2020. The next honoree is part of the recipients of the William Winter Scholar and Humanities Award. The 2022 recipient of the William Winter Scholar Award is Jeannie Bowers, a Tupelo English instructor and Phi Theta Kappa advisor. She was among statewide recipients honored during the 32nd Annual Natchez Library and Cinema Celebration in February. Jeannie joined the ICC faculty 
full-time in 2011. She has also served as writing senior consultant and director. She earned both a bachelor's and master's degrees from Mississippi State University. Her awards include National Merit Finalist and the Phi Theta Kappa Phi Star Advisor. Beanie Warren Outstanding Advisor for the Mississippi, Louisiana region two years and the Horizon Award for New Advisors. She is a member of Sigma Tau Delta, National English Honorary Delta Kappa Gamma Organization of Women Educators and Regional Advisory Board for the Mississippi, Louisiana region of PTK. She has also a score for AP language exams. She has served as presenter at the Transitioning to College Writing Conference at the University of Mississippi in 2016. She and her husband, Michael, have two children. Congratulations to you, Bowers, 2022, William Spell. Our next honoree is the 2022 Mississippi Humanities Teacher Award winner, Keith Morris. In late March, he presented Little Boxes, The Importance of Purpose at ICC. And three days before, he was among the honorees during the MHC award ceremony at Old Catholic Museum in Jackson. When he was selected as ICC's award nominee, Keith said, I teach alongside such talented, hardworking folks and feel honored to receive this award, not just for myself, but as simple representation of my team. Keith earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Mississippi, a master's degree from Mississippi State University. Since 2008, he has served as an English instructor at ICC where he has co-created World Lit 1, Drama Production 4, and he created writing for publication. He is poetry editor for the Calliope and sponsor for both Sigma, Kappa Delta, and Film Club. Keith is a poetry drug judge where SKD's Hedera Helix Literary Journal and for ICC's entries for the Mississippi Community College Creative Writing Association. His literary work is published in multiple venues. In addition, Keith has an extensive discography, which includes his work as a writer, musician, and producer. As a matter of fact, he will be participating in the singer songwriter competition at the Gum Tree Wine and Art Festival tomorrow at 120 on the main stage on spring. Since 2015, Keith has also been a uh, staunch volunteer for St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. He and his wife Shannon have two sons, Parker and Parker. Congratulations, Keith Morris, recipient of the Mississippi Humanities At this time, we honor those who are retiring at Obama Community College. Community College, sorry. The individuals who are being recognized today have a combined 322 years of service. Barry Emerson will present the first two honorees. Our first retiree is Miss Tanya Cox who is an Information Systems Technology Computer Programming Instructor. Tanya has been with the college since August 19, 1987, when she taught business technology courses. Her application was filed originally on an Inawama Junior College and AHS form, and her last name was Bruce. Following her graduation from Orville High School, Tanya became a member of the ICC family when she enrolled as a data process, processing major. During her days at ICC, she was a member of Phi Beta Lambda and an Indian ambassador, which was the forerunner organization to today's Indian delegation. She said that her fondest memory of ICC will be when Mr. Charles Cressman, now Dr. Charles Cressman, called in August of 1987 and said, you are an ICC graduate and now an ICC instructor. Her philosophy that she inscribed on her application holds true today. The community college represents a hub of education for its citizens. It is a stepping stone in helping an individual achieve his or her potential. Tanya, we are so glad that you came home to ICC. 
Katie said that in her retirement she plans to travel and do more church work. The impact on the countless lives of ICC students and you've touched during your 35 years of service will be your legacy. And what an amazing legacy it is. Katie, we will miss you. The next honoree is Charles Wayne Spencer III, or as we know him, Chuck, Director and Instructor for Heating and Air Conditioning Technology Program. Chuck retired in December after 24 years of service at ICC, and now, five months later, is continuing to work in HVAC but is self-employed, and he will be taking orders for, for work after service. <laughs> Chuck joined the ICC family when he enrolled in the Heating and Air Conditioning Program in 1993 as a student. He was a member of the Vocational Industrial Club of America and Phi Theta Kappa. He was also an honor student, placing third in Heating and Air Technology in the State Victor Competition in 1994. When he completed his application on December 3, 1996, Chuck's interests were goat ranching, hunting, fishing, and computers. I'm not sure how many of those, Chuck, that you'll get to do or carry over into your retirement. His application also included extensive information on the parts of the refrigerant system and their functions. And although I didn't participate in the hiring process back then when Chuck came aboard, based on the three pages attached, I would definitely have been a yes. It doesn't take a three-page document to prove how much Chuck Spencer's knowledge and skills have impacted vast numbers of ICC students, most of whom are working in the field in which he has devoted his life. Congratulations, Chuck. ICC misses you greatly. We appreciate your dedication not only to the college, but to your students and to ensure that they have the knowledge and skills to be competitive today. Tim Center will present the next two retirees. Mr. Thomas Bonds is our next honoree. He joined the ICC family on April 13, 2004 as director of our fiscal plan. He came to the college after serving as project manager for West Brothers Construction. And all we have to do is look around on all three ICC locations, Fulton Tupelo and Belden to see the results of Thomas's impact in his 18 years of service. His duties and responsibilities have expanded over the career, over his career here at ICC. But the one consistent is that we have, is that we have one of the most beautiful colleges anywhere. And he and his staff have been responsible for that. They've also been responsible for the new construction, renovation, and day-to-day -day maintenance and facilities and grounds. In addition to ICC, Thomas has been committed to the betterment of his community, serving as War II Councilman for the City of Tupelo. A Daily Journal article that featured him in 2007 said, that Thomas Bonds ran for the City Council, the motorcycle riding family man, cruised every street in his War II to drum up support. He knocked on doors, chatted with residents, and kept a notebook of issues he thought needed attention. I'm not sure if Thomas still does this, but by now, he has filled many notebooks and followed up with what needed to be done. Thomas's interests on his application included music, boating, and Auburn football. They have more evil written in here, but I just, I can't say it with effort. Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, we wish you the best in retirement. You'll be missed.
Our next retiree honoree is Mr. Freddie Tucker. Not sure what, I can, what more I can say about Mr. Tucker, as he's already been said during the presentation of the Meritorious Awards, but he retired with ICC on April 30th after 23 years of service in the maintenance department as a carpenter. But he wasn't just a carpenter, not just a carpenter, but a carpenter extraordinary. Freddie has always been willing to help whenever he's needed, and in today's job market, those, um, those individuals are difficult to find. One of the best descriptions of Freddie was from one of his Meritorious Award nominee, nominators. The Christmas float which he designs, builds, and drives and parades is one of the things he looks forward to every year. It is a labor of love of which he works tirelessly. And not only is the float his pride and joy, it is a part of the legacy he leaves behind. Freddie plans to spend more time with his wife Carol and the rest of his family, as well as being more involved in church events. Also, he said, of course, I will be busy gardening and fishing. And um, in his week of retirement, he has already sent me two videos of him fishing. <laughs> and he was successful in that endeavor. Freddie, not only will we miss you here at ICC, but we, uh, but so will all those people in our communities that have touched, that have been touched by the Christmas floats that you have built and driven over the years and the spirit of the season. Thank you, Mr. Freddie Tucker, for your vast contribute contributes to ICC, and we wish you the best on your retirement. at this time is Mr. Gregory Keith Jones. Mr. Keith served as a uh, groundskeeper for us here at ICC from August of 1997 to September of 2021, 24 years of service with the college. And just in some of the comments that we mentioned with Mr. Bonds, uh, all you have to do is look around to see the beautification of the campuses to see Mr. Jones's work. Mr. Jones served not only on our Fulton campus, but he also served on our Tupelo campus, and he served on our Bellevue campus. I think uh, as you speak with Mr. Jones, he'll be quick to tell you that uh, he is looking forward to retirement, spending that with family. He has a daughter who lives here in Metachet. He has a son who lives up in Connecticut, which I don't think he's looking forward to going to the, the cold winter weather, but he makes, uh, he's got plans to do that soon. And uh, one thing I always loved about uh, speaking with Mr. Jones is, is that I have a, I personally, I have an older brother who served as a work study for Mr. Jones. And so I can't say a whole lot of good things about my brother, but the few things that I can say good about him, I know that he learned that. <laughs> and so with that, uh, Mr. Jones, we wish you the best in retirement. We're glad to see you today. Uh, but uh, every time, as you'll 
notice when someone calls because I don't know if it's so dark and I don't know if Coach Ball's out there. But uh, every time someone would call the athletic office, Coach Ball wouldn't answer the phone. Uh, she could be sitting by the phone and she wouldn't answer it. But Miss Sylvia would, but she did it with appropriate kindness. She would always hear good morning or good afternoon athletics. And so it was always a pleasure to call the athletics office. A few things about her that you might not know is uh, Sylvia did attend elementary school in Forest. Uh, she graduated high school in Belmont, graduated uh, from the school up north, as we call it, and I don't know how that happened either because she turned out so well, but she did that, graduated from that school, and she earned her bachelor's degree from another school that we won't mention as well, but I guess we'll have to, and that's Ole Miss, Dr. Allen, I know we don't like to mention that, but uh, she, she turned out well considering those two opportunities in those two schools that she attended there. Uh, in 2014, Miss Sylvia was nominated by 13 individuals as the recipient of the Sports Staff Employee of the Year. A majority stated that she demonstrates high standards in all the areas on the nomination form. As one, nom uh, one nomination stated perfectly, the time value, uh, excuse me, the true value of an employee can be determined by asking one simple question. Could the department function as efficient, efficiently, efficiently without that person? Well, as we know, uh, all of us do, and any of our coaches who've been up in that office, which is every day, that, the answer to that question is no. Uh, and even Coach Ball would tell you that. The nominations also stated quite frequently how, uh, about how much Sylvia not only cares for the coaches, but she also cares for our student athletes. Following her selection as the award recipient, Ms. Sylvia wrote a thank you note to Mr. Sutter. In part, it reads, how humbling, how humbling it is to be singled out from my peers for this selection. It was a surprise to be chosen, but I am honored to even be nominated. ICC is blessed with many hardworking individuals and employees. I count myself fortunate to work with such great individuals. Ms. Sylvia, it, uh, it also, we consider ourselves fortunate and blessed to work with you. We wish you the best in retirement and happiness. We will all miss you. Thank you. Today's final 2022 retiree is Mike Sullivan. This could be probably the biggest surprise of 2022. It was to me. Uh, in fact, the decision was made to retire on Wednesday of uh, this week. So that's how big of a surprise it was. Uh, and it was breaking news in the sports world, as many of you have heard. Coach Sullivan. He is, uh, excuse me, Coach Sullivan's road to ICC began with degrees from Mississippi State and teaching and coaching positions in Meridian and Columbus. For the past 20 seasons, he has been the head coach of ICC men's soccer. And this is a bit notable, but the, uh, the programs, he's also the program's all-time winningest coach. In his press release, he said, when I accepted the job, I had no idea ICC would be the place I would call home for the next 20 years. Turns out, I couldn't have made a better decision in my life. I've enjoyed my time here more than I can uh, easily express. Now, for those of you out there that are keeping statistics uh, in our sports information department, I know they do, his record at ICC was uh, 215 wins, 208 losses, and 32 ties. We have those 32 ties, Coach. We need to figure that out. Uh, we need to convert those. Uh, so you can see, obviously, the success he had here on the soccer field. More than 200 of his players earned conference and national academic honors. More than 50 All-State, 40 All-Region, three NJCAA Region 23 players of the year, and 
one NJCAA All-American. Although you might wonder why this is uh, in, included in Coach Sullivan's retirement information, it, that is just basically why we, we state the impact he has had here on our student-athletes and the college as a whole. Countless student-athletes are better people and have gone on to do great things in large part to the impact Coach Sullivan has had on their lives. His passion for his players and the game of soccer has culminated in a very successful career. He leaves a great legacy and will be missed. He plans, though, as you can get this, it's going to be tough. He plans to move to Spanish Fort, Alabama. It's going to be a tough world down there uh, for him. Uh, where he and his wife, though, have recently purchased a new home, and he will serve as an assistant director uh, in the city of Baymanette Parks and Recreation. Two things about Coach Solo, too, that I want to mention. In 2020, we know we had uh, COVID, and uh, he also had the fortunate, uh, I guess, award, if we want to call it. As I, y'all, most of y'all know, I dealt with the COVID student, uh, uh, those uh, that were reported. And his whole team went down before anybody else's. <laughs> and we dealt with that in August. Uh, and the second thing I want you to take note of as we bring Coach Sullivan to uh, Dr. Riley here is he's wearing a tie and a coat today. Uh, but that, that's an accomplishment for Coach Sullivan. He knows that, and, and uh, I tell you, I'm proud of him. But listen, Coach Sullivan, uh, I want to wish you the best in retirement. Thank you for all you've done for the college. We're all going to miss you. Thank you, Coach. to introduce our Vice President of Human Resources and Administration, Mr. Tim Center, uh, who went to Mississippi State and had a long legacy career at the college. We're proud of him, and he will present the remaining retirees who will not be present tonight. Probably not everybody's paycheck will be processed this morning. <laughs> that could not be with us today, so we wanted to recognize them. Um, and so, Ms. Dolores Basham, WIOA Office Assistant, from September 2006 to June of 2022, 16 years of service. Ms. Debbie Garrett, Student Accounts, Cashier's Clerk, December of 1997 through March of 2022, 25 years of service. Ms. Tina Garrett, Instructor, Early Childhood Education, August of 2013 through May of 2022, nine years of service. Ms. Rilla Jones, Dean of Health Sciences, September of 2016 through June of 2022, six years of service. Andy Kirk, head softball coach, whose Indians are playing currently in the MACC. MACCC Tournament at Jones, July 2011 through May of 2022, 11 years of service. Jacqueline Debbie Martin, Director of Continuing Education and Community Services, January of 2008 through June of 2022, 14 years of service. Ms. Barbara Staggs, Bookkeeper, November of 2006 through January of 2022, 16 years of service. Donald Greg Taylor, instructor, commercial truck driving, August of 1997 through December 2021, 24 years of service. With that being said, please join me in a round of applause. Dr. Allen, President, for closing remarks. Thank you. Y'all see what I got to deal with back here. <laughs> Give him a microphone, it gets dangerous. So, but on behalf of the Edwin Community 
College family, congratulations to all of the recipients of meritorious and other special awards and recognitions for 2022, as well as our retirees this afternoon. We celebrate with you and now better understand the true definition of meritorious through all of the accomplishments of our honorees. We also are excited for our retirees and their plans for the future, but please know that you are and will be missed. We wish you the best. We appreciate your attendance this afternoon. We hope that you will join us for a special reception in the lobby gallery area where you will have an opportunity to congratulate and share your best wishes with today's honorees. Thank you so much.